Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In our today's lecture, we shall discuss about the Newton Raphson's method. This is another method which helps you to locate the root for the nonlinear functions. As usual, first of all, we'll be describing the theory of this method, and then at the end, inshallah, we'll be solving a question. So let's take start the procedure of this uh, NR method. The title of the method is Uh, Newton Raphson's method and the other name for this method is the NR method. Okay. The method starts from a function whose root we are looking for, and in order to locate the root, we also require for this method an initial starting S. And here we have taken the initial starting as, as x0. This method based on the principle that whenever you have some initial starting as, on the basis of that initial starting as, we can make the next better approximation for the root of the function. Suppose this is the initial starting as, the next approximation can be made in the form x0 plus h x0 is the initial guess which we are given in the question or we are taking start from here and h the increment we are providing h can be any number which can be assigned to <coughs> x0 in order to obtain the next better approximation what is h and how we can calculate h in order to do this if we assume that this is going to be the root of this function f of x, then according to the principle, f of x0 plus h should be equals to 0. Okay, if this is the root, then the remainder should be equals to 0. Now, if we expand this side by using the Taylor series, so here we can write down the terms like that. x0 is squared by 2 factorial f double dash of x0 and you can write down many more terms and the net result is equal to 0. Okay. Now if we truncate it up to the first order means for here. Then what do we get? We get f of 0 plus h times f prime of x0 and the net result is equal to 0. From here we can separate h so h will be equals to minus f of 0 whole divided by f prime of x0. So now you can see here the increment which we are giving to x0 can be obtained by using this relation. And this is the relation between the function's value at the initial point as well as its derivative at the initial point. So now if we come back here, if I call this as your first initial starting as and show it by x1. So x1 is equal to x0 plus h. And then we can replace h by this quantity, which we have just derived from the Taylor series. So the result takes the form f of x0 over f prime of x0. Okay. Uh, let's erase it from here. Okay. After writing this, if we want to make the next better approximation in the form of x2, so according to the previous result, we can make the change here. So x0 will be replaced by x1. Similarly, here it is f of x1 over f prime of x1. And for the next better approximation, we can write down x2 here, f of x2 over f of f x uh, to f prime of x2. So here you can see each new approximation is coming from the previous approximation. In order to obtain x1 we have used x0, for x2 we have used x1 and similarly we can obtain many other approximations. So if we can generalize this result, so it takes the form xn plus 1 is equals to xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. So this becomes a formula that will be helpful to locate the root for the 
given nonlinear functions and this is generally known as the Anand formula or Newton Rossen's formula. So this is the formula you have to uh, keep it in your mind. And uh, the value of n, n starts from 0, 1 and onward. So each time you have to just change the index and uh, you will be obtaining the next, next better approximation. And now after knowing this formula and every step behind this, the next is uh, to apply it on a question but there are a few more important things that are here. This method is uh, one of the most uh, quickly converging method it takes you towards the root so quickly uh, and uh, there are few merits as well as demerits of this uh, formula the merit is the convergence rate is of course quite high but the demerit is okay, you have to calculate the derivative of the function this is definitely a problem here and further the derivative is appearing in the denominator and if you are making some guess where the derivative of the function gets zero so definitely you will stuck here and you cannot proceed because whenever any quantity <coughs> excuse me any quantity in the denominator is getting zero of course we cannot proceed so in such a case we have to be careful in order to select the initial starting guess so initial starting guess is most important in this particular uh, method of nr now we apply it on a question Uh, the question is uh, here we are taking the function f of x x cube minus x minus 11 thing is uh, for this particular question now in order to proceed we require the function's value at 2 which is equals to 2 cube minus 2 minus 11 this is equals to minus 5 Okay. Also, we require the derivative of the function, and this will be three times x square minus one. And for the, uh, if you have the formula in your mind, that uh, we also require the value of derivative of the function at the initial point, which is three times two square minus one. This is equals to uh, okay eleven. So this is the. Uh, uh, value for the derivative of the function as well as the function's value at the initial starting guess and now on the basis of these we have to uh, go for the next better approximation so first of all you have to write down the formula the formula for the inner method is xn plus 1 xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn so this is the formula from where we have to take stuff. Addition number one starts by putting n equals to zero. On taking n equals to zero, we get x1 on the left side, x0, f of x0 over f prime of x0. Now x0 is 2 minus f of 2 over f prime of 2. And we have already calculated the values, we can substitute them here. If I separate it from here, so x1 now takes the form 2 minus f of 2 is minus 5 over 11. And remaining, you can use your calculators, and the result up to four decimal places are uh, 2.4545. So it's uh, very simple, nothing difficult is there. You have just changed the index and you obtain this result. Now to proceed to the next iteration, we change index from 0 to 1. On putting n equals to 1 in this formula, we get, uh, before proceeding, sorry for that, before proceeding, we, uh, we have to calculate the function's value as well as its derivative's value at the new uh, approximations. So here f of x1 means f of 2.4545, uh, this is equals to, 1.33 and one more 3 is there and 6. This is the function's value after putting this value over here and simplifying we get this one. And the derivative of the function's value at x1 is 
a prime of 2.4545 this is the derivative you have to put x value x1 value here and the result is equals to 17.0744 and you can see all the calculations i'm doing up to four decimal places okay after doing these values now we uh, go for the next iteration here we change the index for n equals to 1 on putting a n equals to 1 in this formula we get x2 on the left side x1 minus f of x1 and f prime of x1 and here you can see we have all the values x1 is here 2.4545 and f of x1 we have calculated we can substitute its value directly here 1336 and uh, in the denominator the derivative of the function is 17.0744 and remaining you can solve it by using your calculators and the result gets equals to 2.37 and 64 so this is the <coughs> next better approximation uh, after the second iteration Okay, I I'm going to erase all these to make a space here. Okay, now we uh, proceed for the next. So before going ahead, we have to calculate the function value at x two, and uh, this gives you two point three seven six four, and the function value at the uh, next better approximation is zero point zero and 444 four, four. similarly you have to calculate the derivatives <coughs> the derivative of the function at this new approximated value so it is 2.3764 and the result gets equals to 15.94 24 okay now we change the index from 1 to 2, the formula takes the form x2 is equals to x1, oh sorry, it will be now x3 here, and x2 will be here minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. Now x2 is 2.3764, and f of x2 we have calculated here 0 0.0444. And the derivative value is 15.9424. Okay. On simplifying, we'll be getting 2.3737. So this is the output for the iteration number 3. Now to go ahead for the next iteration, first we have to calculate the function value at the new value of x3. And this is 2.37. So on substituting it into the function, we get 0 0.001 and the derivative of the function at x3 is 2.3737 and whenever you solve it, the result is equal to 15.9027. So now you can see we obtain the function as well as its derivative values and the next step is simply to uh, change the index okay now we take n equals to 3 on the left side gives you 4 x3 minus f of x3 over f prime of x3 and x3 is 2.3737 and f of x3 we have calculated that is 0 0.0001 and uh, the derivative is 15.9027 okay the result gets equals to 2.3737 and you can see if you make the comparison of the previous value or previous approximation to the current approximation so you can find 
uh, up to three decimal place accuracy. So if we go for the next addition, might be uh, these two addition gets equal. So that will be the place where we have to take stop. Generally, we take stop up to uh, this level. So here, first we calculate. This is your x4. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, we calculate x4. This is equals to uh, f of 2.3736. Whenever you substitute it into the function, we get uh, the third is equals to almost zero, up to four decimal place. Uh, of course, it is not zero if you go for, uh, uh, further for the other decimal places. And the derivative for the x4 is uh, f prime of 2.3736, 15 15.9026. Okay, so the next step is uh, to change the index. So here we uh, change the index to obtain the next better approximation for the given problem. So on taking n equals to 4, we get n5, uh, x5 on the left side and x4 minus fx4 over f prime of x4. Put in the values, this gives you 2.3736 minus 0 over uh, whatever it is, everything will be 0 of course. Uh, so the net result is 2.3736. So here you can see we get the uh, same result up to four decimal places for the two consecutive iterations. And the result occurs just within the four iterations. So you can see the uh, quickness of this method's convergence. We got the result just in four iterations. So with this, thank you very much and have fun with you.